Angry Birds Star Wars continues to be one of the best crossovers ever, and I had a blast seeing some of my favorite Star Wars characters as birds. But what about Darth Maul? General Grievous? Jabba the Hutt? There are so many awesome characters we haven't covered yet, and I'm sick of it. Today we are not only covering more Angry Birds pigs, but finishing the second half of ranking every character in Angry Birds Star Wars. The birds are more prominently used as playable characters, which means all the enemies from the first game are pigs, and there were playable pigs in the sequel, and we even have more unidentified pigs to discover from the cinematic trailer. Man, I miss the days of ranking 30 or so characters. Since the pigs have a much more prominent role in Star Wars 2, I'm going to start with the playable pigs there, then move to the pigs scene in the original Star Wars game. There's so freaking many, I don't even feel like naming them here. Let's just get into it. Without further ado, let's find out if we should join the pork side, or if we should instead set these freaks on fire with some formaldehyde. Angerbird Star Wars 2 marked the first time that pigs would be given a slingshot role alongside the birds throughout the story of the game. We now see both the birds and pigs perspective of major Star Wars events, which is great for the prequels considering how they end. The pork side is super important and I'm really glad they did it the way they did. The first playable pig of the cast is none other than Jango Fett. Mandalorians have always been cool characters and they absolutely nailed that look in Angry Birds too. He is just perfect. As tradition, they felt the need to make new Angry Birdified names for these characters, so this one is, of course, Jango Fett. I wish I was that clever. He fittingly received a missile as well, launching wherever you tap and sending Jango flying as a result. He's definitely not overpowered, but I do love him very much, so let's start our list with an A tier. The very next character was the freaking Emperor, or Darth Sidious for all the sticklers out there. Maybe you want to call him by his pig name, Emperor Piggleteen. They just keep getting better and better. I've always loved that he's just the King Pig with a cloak on, and you can very clearly see that crown sticking through. Angerbirds tried to retcon this as a fork for some reason, but we don't have to listen to them. That's really, really stupid. He is playable in the sequel, using his signature lightning abilities, but we got to see him in the first game too. He's really the final boss, and once you break his shield, you get to use Darth Vader himself to beat the Emperor in the final level. That's a pretty awesome way to end the game. It is a little weird that he looks exactly the same in Star Wars 2, when he should really be younger with no robes, but I'll allow it. They compromise by making him wear a beak when he's in disguise, and that's honestly just a funny visual. I really don't like playing as a guy, but he is a cool final boss, so what the heck. Give him a B tier. One of my favorite non Angry Birds pigs is Rusty the Boar. Just wait until he unleashes his beast! Just a hog whipping out his beast, and whatever you do, don't say that the other way around. Let me introduce you to my favorite new mobile game on Apple Arcade. Beast stands for Bio Exo Arena Suit Team, and in this game, every furry friend on your team has their own beast. Work together to beat the team in a 3v3 shooter arena. I love Rusty, but I cannot wait to unlock Finn the Shark or Nyx the Owl. Each character has a unique loadout, so have fun finding the one that suits your playstyle best. What's especially great about Beast is that there are no ads or microtransactions. All you need is an Apple Arcade account and you're set. If you've never tried Apple Arcade before, claim your free trial by clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code and play Beast all you want for a full month. Man, that sounds like the greatest month a guy could have. I really love the personality of this game and was surprised how much fun I had in the arena. I've played games like this before, but none have edgy personas with mechs to pilot, so clearly any game without those features are inferior. There's tons of modes, characters, costumes, and it's super accessible to all skill levels. Check out Beast today by scanning the QR code or clicking the link in the description, and thank you to OPB for sponsoring the video. Now let's get back to those darn pigs. A little more obscure of an enemy here, the Droidica. I really hope that's how it's pronounced. They made it look a lot like the actual droids, but really nothing like a pig. Remove that snout and that's just a robot. Its power takes Yoda's spinning move and it ends with C-3PO's crumble move. If you haven't seen that first video, then you missed how much I HATE that move. It's even more useless here, making this one of the most frustrating pigs to play as. He's only in the bonus levels too. These aren't bonuses, these are TORTURE! I don't hate the concept or the design, but that doesn't keep him out of F tier! We're starting things early today. Our next droid is the Battle Droid. In Star Wars, these things have become the butt of every joke. It's rare to show one on screen without it being killed hilariously. No, shoot, I'm not the commander. He he's the commander. Guess I'm the commander now. They're these tall, skinny droids that suck very hard, and I feel like the design of the Angry Birds just doesn't cut it. This thing looks almost nothing like the real deal, to the point that I forget they're the same character. To be fair, I really don't know how they could have done it better, but I digress. They're given the very basic blaster shots as their ability, which makes perfect sense, but is still very boring. They're weirdly also the main enemies in the birdside levels, but look unrecognizable from their own dang game. 
They're more green and pig-like, I guess just to make them feel like normal Angry Birds enemies and to help them stand out, but it's all very strange. I'm thinking D tier. And of course, the fan favorite Red Battle Droid! How could they make a game without these guys? A reskin with a near identical ability to a character I already don't care about? My favorite! F tier! Here we go, now we're freaking talking! One of the coolest characters ever now made even cooler as a pig. They made an amazing teaser for the game with Darth Maul that I watched over and over as a kid. I couldn't get enough of this stuff. Everyone wanted a double sided lightsaber because of this guy. Who wouldn't want to be Darth Moore? Yes, you heard me right. What the hell does Moore mean? Anyways, he's got a great lightsaber ability, looks crazy cool, and is one of my favorite Star Wars characters. I'm definitely saying S tier. The best they could do was Count Dodo? Count Dudu was right there! I've never cared much for the guy, and look at him here. He's just a pig with facial hair. He gets to be the final boss of the main story, and gets Mace Windu's overpowered boomerang ability. I really wish someone cooler got to have this one, but I guess I shouldn't complain too much. You'll always be Count Dudu in my eyes, so have fun and be tier. Our one and only female playable pig in Star Wars is Zam Wessel, also known as Zam Weasel. Somehow, Ham Wessel was right under their damn snouts and they changed the last name to Weasel. She's not a weasel, she's a hog, you hoodlum! If you don't remember this character from the movies, I don't blame you, but it makes sense they've added her here. She gets a whole dang boss fight to herself, as well as the grappling hook ability in her playable form. Definitely was not expecting her to be the pig version of Jar Jar Wings. Misa miss him so freaking much. Zam Weasel is honestly just fine. I neither hate or love her. She really makes me wish there were more female villains in Star Wars. Oh well, B tier. Boba Fat takes after his dad, just as fat as ever. Again, Mandalorians are amazing, so you gotta love the OG. If you've never seen the Boba's delivery short they made for him, you need to pause this video and watch it. It's quite possibly one of the greatest animations in Angry Birds history. I've seen it at least 50 times. He's one of the most prominent pigs in Angry Birds Star Wars, appearing in both games. He's just a better version of his father, firing two missiles rather than just one, and he really shines in the first game. There's a whole dang level pack titled Boba Fett Missions that was unlocked after finding five jetpacks throughout the levels or just buying the pack. He's a unique boss that flies in each stage, and can be used to deal some damage when beaten. I've always loved Boba Fett, and considering he's just a better Django, then why not? Put him in S. Speaking of my favorites, our four-armed quad-wielding robot is finally here. General Grievous? No, they had a much better name for him. He should now be known as my own personal nickname in high school, General Grunter. You literally can't make this stuff up. Of course he was given all four lightsabers and they absolutely nailed the look of him here. He is perfect as perfect can be. He's also one of my favorite telepods I own, so let's look at my collection once again. Let me know which pig telepods you had. My best ones are Grievous, Jabba, Maul, and Piggletine. I got the essentials, so I'm happy with my collection. I'm not really sure if Grievous is a fan favorite or if I've always just had a weird fascination with him, but he's gotta be S for me. We've made it to the face of the franchise. The ultimate Star Wars baddie that takes your breath away every time he appears on screen. The one, the only, Lard Vader. Man, that name really takes the wind out of the sails. Darth Vader! It's Darth Vader! Getting to play as him in the sequel is one of the greatest joys of an Angerous fan, just absolutely decimating everything in his path. He is so fun to use and even more fun to look at. But that's only one look at the guy. He appears as the enemy of the original Star Wars game. In certain levels, he uses the Force to control platforms around him, making for a really cool gameplay idea I haven't seen since. He's also part of the final boss, which leads to the amazing reveal of Old Bird Anakin inside the helmet. He works with Luke to take out the Emperor in an awesome final confrontation, and really gets the most development out of any other character in the game. Now, I know many of you probably expect me to say, he's not a pig, F tier but I think we can make an exception for freaking Darth Vader. Under the mask, he's Anakin, but Vader is basically a completely different character. He's pure evil, and he's awesome. Just listen to this final cutscene in Star Wars 2. They nailed Vader in both of these games, and it would be messed up to not give him an S tier too. I kinda promised we'd talk about Anakin too, as his third evolution puts him on the pork side. It's the true edgelord version of the character, and honestly, he looks awesome. But let's be real, he's not a pig, F tier. Look, he is cool, okay? It was dumb not to rank him in the last video. I'll put him an A on that list. I hope that makes up for it. 
We've now made it through all the main playable pigs from the game, but we ain't even close to finish. There were a ton of bonus pigs as well, some from the original game and others completely new. And then we also got Hologram Piggletine. I really don't know why this is its own character, they definitely should have just given this ability to him from the get go. He starts as a hologram and can fly through obstacles, then becomes a normal guy with lightning powers on activation. There's a surprising amount of scenarios this can be helpful for. It's a cool idea, but really weird as a separate character. C tier. The official punching bag of the Star Wars series is, of course, the Stormtroopers. They've never amounted to anything, they're a useless army with a recognizable face. Of course, they're the main enemy type seen in the first game, so that's cool, but they also got to be playable in the sequel. I'm so happy for them. I love that they reference their terrible aim and their power, firing randomly on activation. Let's just be honest, these guys are iconic, and you just love to kill them. They're my favorite enemy in the game, and I think they deserve an A tier. In a similar vein, we have the Biker Scout. They're perfectly fine as an enemy in the first game, but really got the chance to shine in the sequel. Sure, he's the counterpart to Pod Racing Anakin, but he gets his own little speeder bike and looks pretty freaking cute riding that thing too. What a cutie. C for cutie. The Shadow Trooper gets the saddest combinations of power yet. None other than Hologram Piggletine is back with a Stormtrooper weapon. Being able to pass through objects lets you attack nearly any part of a stage, but the Stormtrooper weapon is so weak it hardly makes a difference. The Shadow Troopers in actual Star Wars are a pretty cool concept. Inverting the colors of a Stormtrooper is just the perfect amount of edgy, but a combination of two okay powers leaves us with an okay B tier. Trust me, we're nearly through with the Troopers, but we gotta cover the Shock Trooper real quick first. We never really got official clone trooper designs in this game, the closest thing we got is this one. I assume from the name that they'd have a lightning ability, but nah, they just shoot like every other stupid trooper. Where's the Cooper Troopers at? D tier! We're back to the enemies first seen in Angry Birds Star Wars that were made playable for the sequel. If you've ever wondered who's piloting the TIE Fighters, look no further than this guy. He's kinda just a fancy looking shadow trooper, and wouldn't you know it, he just shoots lasers? Talk about exceeding expectations. F tier! Tell me why they made the Royal Guards look so freaking cool and gave them about 2 milliseconds of screen time in the movies. That red cloak is so cool! Sure, they're fun as enemies, but in the sequel they got a completely unique ability. It's a little strange to be honest, but basically they use their forks as a spear and cling to objects for dear life. It has its benefits, I guess, but really I should just be thankful they didn't give this guy a gun like the other clones. I'm putting them in A because they're the coolest kids in school. Finally, this is the moment I've been waiting for. Jabba the freaking hog! When he appeared in the first game, he looked absolutely insane. They did not hold back even a little. Also, <sighs> I love you slightly. <sighs> How could they not make him playable in the sequel? He's like the greatest Star Wars character to ever exist! He'd already been done dirty by not having a boss fight in the first one. He is so unbelievably thick with 300 C's that the whole galaxy shakes as he makes contact with the structure. If you thought Terrence was strong, he just met his freaking maker. He also sticks his tongue out as he flies because of course he does. He's my big obese little boy! Also, if you've not seen the monstrosity of the plushie they planned for this guy, take a look at your freaking screen. Would I wouldn't give to cuddle with that thing every night before bed. Jabba is peak Star Wars, and they have truly given him the respect he deserves here. That's one fat S tier. <sighs> Anyways, we also got the stupid ugly Tusken Raiders. They were the first ever enemy pigs in Angry Birds Star Wars, but never really made an impact other than that. I must say their huge pouty lips are pretty hilarious. I can understand if you like the guy. He received a unique ability as well, calling in a freaking sniper on the rooftop to take out the president. That's a kill. Sniper, get down! It's a pretty fun idea, and I like that the Tuscan Raider flinging virtually doesn't amount to anything, and some random guy off screen is the real hero. What the heck, let's put him in B tier. Let's finish out the Playable Pigs by moving on to the Rebels chapter of the game. It's the stepchild of Angra Star Wars, honestly, despite just how many characters were added. We got as many pigs as we did birds, and you can tell they were sort of scraping the bottom of the barrel to do so. A prime example of this is the ATDP pilot. The birds were all main characters in the show, and our pig Ezra variant is just a generic pilot. I must say, I actually kind of really like how he looks, and clearly he loves Zelda as much as I do. It's too bad he never got to actually pilot an ATDP, which would have made for pretty amazing power, but oh well. That laser is super powerful and always a joy to use. I think I'll put him in B. We got a real character here, Sicarto Visago. 
Out of all the enemies and rebels, this is a strange choice, but remember these levels were based solely on the first little handful of episodes. He gets to throw three time bombs across the stage, which is actually a really powerful attack. It's like three mini bomb birds going off in multiple locations. I've always liked the additions they did for rebels because their powers are generally really good. A weird character with a good power sounds like a B to me. And then the next character literally doesn't have a name. This is Vizago's droid. Can't you see the resemblance? Aw, he looks just like his Pop Pop. Guess whose favorite ability got an upgrade? I got an upgrade. <laughs> this is literally C-3PO, but with like 20 little pieces rather than five. It's certainly more helpful, but absolutely just as frustrating. Remember how Chopper could literally fly wherever he wanted? Yeah, that's how a droid should be done. This is just pathetic. D tier. There's no way I'm wasting coins to try out the Imperial Officer. He doesn't even have a freaking name. Rather than having just a few bullets to aim, this guy can literally shoot anywhere you want until he crashes. That sounds awesome! What the hell? Why didn't I waste my coins on this guy? Like I said, the Rebels characters really got cool powers. I'm sad to see we didn't get more Star Wars characters after them. Anyways, I think the power could be very useful, but it's such a boring Star Wars character. C tier. Finally, an actual Rebels character. Agent Callus hates the Rebels and loves the helmet that perfectly covers his sideburns. When launched, he's got a couple stormtroopers following him, and when activated, a whole army is released. Sure, we already saw this with Wicket on the bird side, but the power just works so perfectly for a horde of stormtroopers. They are extremely weak, and it's tough to find levels this is helpful for, but the idea alone makes me like it a lot. I'm going back to B. Finally, the big bad and final boss of the bird side is the Inquisitor. They absolutely nailed the look of this guy, and it certainly helps that he was already green. He, of course, gets his very awesome Darth Maul inspired blade, and he is definitely OP in the game. I sadly only got to try him out twice, I'm fresh out of coins these days, but you can basically make him go anywhere on stage and swing his lightsaber around. It has a huge range and cuts through objects like butter. It makes me very sad I couldn't try him out more stages, I kind of feel like I wasted him here, but I absolutely see his potential, and he looks very awesome. S tier. Alright, we've done it. All 27 Porkside characters have gotten their spotlight. Good thing we're not even freaking close to finish. Star Wars 2 still had characters throughout the game that never had a playable role. I'd say the one that deserved it the most was without a doubt Sebulba. Sure, he's just a pod racing guy, but think about how easy he could have been to add. Replace a biker scout with Sebulba and his pod racer and you're set. Instead, he appears throughout the second chapter and as the final boss. I guess that's pretty generous for Sebulba. I take it all back. He's just a weird guy. I hate you now, Sebulba. C tier. An even less interesting character is Newt Gunray, the boss of the third chapter. I'm sure he's important to something in the movie, but here he's just a chiseled pig with a stupid Scarlet Witch crown. What kind of parents name their kid Newt? At least let him go by Nathaniel. F tier. This is what they call a vulture droid? This is just a poor man's TIE fighter. This is what you get when you ask for a TIE fighter and mom says you have a TIE fighter at home. That's by far the worst thing we've seen today. F tier. Well, what do you know, we get to meet Newt's best friend, Rune. The only positive thing about this freak is that the blue looks cooler. Have fun with your new friends, an F tier loser. Wanna see the sad excuse for clone troopers we've got in this game? They didn't even bother to make any, they thought kids wouldn't get it, and said these are stormtroopers with fake bird beaks. I would have never understood they were trying to be good without fake bird beak. Thank you so much, just kidding, I was wearing a fake bird beak too. Get fake bird beak, dumbass, F tier. Super battle droids look really, really cool. A tier. What a perfectly stupid angry Star Wars design. They literally took a spider droid and gave a mustache pig's mustache. It's really fun to look at and especially fun to kill. S tier. Give it up for one of the ugliest designs in Star Wars, somehow made more ugly by Angry Birds. Killing these things in game is actually doing them a favor for once. Obviously F tier. The pigs actually fight these guys, but they're clearly not birds, right? They definitely look more like pigs, but who can say? Maybe this guy's a turtle or something. Either way, it's nearly as disgusting as the Genosian we just looked at, and that's impressive. Kinda endearing though, D tier. Last one, thank god. They somehow made Rodians freaking adorable in the Rebels levels. Let me remind you, this is what the typical Star Wars Rodian look like. Yeah, not pretty. Yet, I can't get enough of these little guys. Makes me genuinely sad to kill them. As always, not like I'm not gonna brutally murder if I get a chance. Put these guys in A tier. 
the final, final, final Angry Birds Star Wars 2 character shows up in a single cutscene and makes no impact on anything, and I hate him, and I want to move on now, please, so get out of my way, virgin F tier! Now we have our own little trilogy of characters, only ever seen as toys. I told you guys, I'm freaking thorough. I'm not looking to miss any pigs any damn time soon. These three coincidentally are pretty important Star Wars creatures that really don't make sense as birds or pigs. Feast your eyes on Reek, who uh, certainly fits that description. If it wasn't for that snout, I really wouldn't call this thing a pig. He's a full bone triceratops with arms and legs, and he's very, very strange. Sort of funny though, C tier. We also got the Rancor, who, uh, yeah, that's definitely more pig-like. I really would have loved to see this guy in the official art for the game. I already sort of like the Reek, and the Rancor is leagues more entertaining than that loser. A tier. Our toy trilogy ends with the Wampa. That is just pathetic, man. Just like the sequel trilogy in Star Wars, we end with a very mediocre D tier. Before we move on to the enemies from the first game, we have to revisit the Gantina scene from the trailer. We successfully identified Muftak in our last video, but there are way more pigs in here than there's any right to be. Here's the plan. Any generic randos are getting left out. Deal with it. And everyone else we've managed to identify can join the list. I think that's fair. I'd like to start our first guy by putting the name up on screen for you. Yeah, that's a name. If I sat on my keyboard, I bet I could get pretty close to that. Send in your guesses on how to pronounce this shit. My best guess is Cardu Sai Malak. He really just looks like they made the devil real in Star Wars. I would pay good money to have a plush or telepod of this guy. He looks awesome. A tier. Our next freak is Hem Dazen. Is no Star Wars character allowed to be named like Jeff or something? I like to think this guy looked normal and then got sat on by Jabba one day and was never the same. He's funny, but nothing special. C tier. Then we got to see the whole Cantina band, and if you're curious, their band name is Fingering Dan and the Nude Models. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyways, if these guys are responsible for that banging Cantina music, then there's no doubt about it. I freaking love jizz! Huh? Yeah. What's wrong? You didn't know that jazz is called jizz in Star Wars? Clearly you don't know Star Wars like I do. Anyways, Fingering Dan and the Nude Models go in S tier. Next is Cabe, Moftak's little baddie best friend. Bats kind of already have pig noses, so this is perfect. I honestly love her just as much as Muftak. This is peak Star Wars alien design. Huh, <sighs> I hope one day Cabe will be mine. A tier. If you've ever wondered who got his pickle cut off in the trailer, it's none other than Ponda Baba. He looks absolutely disgusting, but I must say, I'm kinda craving a pickle right now. God damn it, now I gotta wait the rest of this video before I can get myself a damn pickle. Thanks a lot, Ponda Baba. F tier. Wait, his friend is named Dr. Evison? Like, he's got a PhD and he's in a bar defending his pickle bro? Go get a job, loser! F tier! Apparently we can identify the bartender as Woo Her, Erm, um, I hardly know her. But you cannot tell me this guy ain't just a freaking pig. That's not a Star Wars character, that's just a freaking minion pig from Angie Bird! F tier! And now we've gotten to the point where there are clearly important pigs in here, but I have no idea who they are. I once again reached out to the Star Wars nerds who watched my videos to help nail down a few of these guys. This Twi'lek pig is pretty front and center, but no one really thought she was a specific Star Wars character. Lame. D tier. Thanks to this comment, we can identify a few more of the cast. Thank you very much, I'm Nick. Wait, what the hell? No, I'm not. I'm Jake. Jake! Whatever, it doesn't matter. This hooded pig seems to be Trinto Dwaba, and that certainly makes sense. Add it to the wiki, you cowards. Nick clearly knows his stuff. The people in the comments really took a liking to the guy. Anyways, now that we properly identify this guy, we can say for sure that he is weird and ugly. D tier. He also identified the Tonica sisters, most well known for their giant mound of fake hair on their heads. They look way better as pigs, I can tell you that much. C tier. Now, there were a few more I wanted to mention, but wasn't confident enough to rank. Some people said this guy was Bib Fortuna, and it kind of looks similar, but really not close enough. Bib Fortuna would have been too busy at Jabba's palace anyways. I wanted to show you this Bantha, but I refuse to rank it as a pig. It really doesn't look like a bird or a pig, which is definitely unique for these games. I didn't want to leave it behind, but I also really don't think it belongs on the tier list. Sorry little buddy, you do look pretty awesome, I must say. Someone said their friend James was in there, and someone spotted Paul, so that was pretty impressive. Here are a few more comments that were actually helpful that correctly identified some of the characters in here. Alright, let's move on now. Do you guys believe Han Solo or Greedo? Said McClunky. McClunky. 
because I think Han Solo said it first. Yeah, Greedo literally showed up in one cutscene to get shot in the face by Chuck. But if it makes you feel any better, they were literally going to give him his own plush. A character that showed up in one cutscene deserves a plushie? Now that's what I call him a clunky. C tier. Alright, final stretch people. We're finally back into the first game to look at the remaining enemies that didn't return in the sequel. One of which being the TIE Fighter, who didn't exist yet in the prequels I guess. Something I've always loved about the first game is how faithful it is to the original trilogy. From the screen swipes to the breathtaking backgrounds, and even down to the gosh dang character designs. So I've always really hated the TIE Fighter because of that. I definitely get making this look more like pigs so you know their enemies, but come on. There are other droids and ships that totally got the point across without turning them into a literal pig. I just hate them. F tier. Then again, when they turn Darth Vader's head into a TIE Fighter, that's pretty freaking funny. I also just think it looks way better. If the TIE Fighters have to be pig heads, then I guess I'm pretty okay with this one. B tier. Well, if it isn't the bowling ball headed pig himself. Seriously, is that what they were going for with the Death Star Trooper? Because that's generally all I can think about when I see these guys. They look like they cut a bowling ball in half and stuck it on their head. If that is not what they were going for, then this is very bad. C tier. While the Imperial officers do look quite dapper, they're also just pigs in uniform. Not the worst, just boring. D tier. Well, if it isn't Grand Moff Tarkin himself. More like Grand Muff Tarkin. Am I right or am I right? I have always had a preference toward the mustache pig, so it really doesn't matter what he looks like as long as he's here. It's the perfect role for him to play, too. Mustache Pig is just as obedient to King Pig as the Mothman is to Vader. He was once going to look more like this regular elderly pig as seen through this early toy they made of him. I am very glad they gave Mustache Pig a chance to shine, and I'm putting Moftash in A tier. How could there be levels in Hoth without the classic Snow Troopers? I love that you can see the outline of their snout underneath the veil. This one just turned out so amazing. Let's put it on the same level as the Stormtrooper with an A tier. Another named character, Maximilian Beers. I can't believe it, my favorite Star Wars character! Who is this guy again? Eh, who cares. It's really as a name when he's just a minion pig you see throughout the Hoth levels. He looks fine, C tier. Sadly, we don't get to rank the AT-ATs themselves. Instead, we're left with the stupid pigs that pilot them. The red pork side logo on their heads really helped make them have some bit of intrigue, but yeah, pretty boring. D tier. See, the Viper Probe Droid is exactly what I was talking about before during the TIE Fighter section. It's still very much a pig, but perfectly combined with the droid we know and love. They're the first flying enemy of the game, which is something we'll see again very soon. I love how creepy these things are, and they're really satisfying to blow up. One of my favorites of the enemies so far. I'm thinking S tier. The second half of the Hoth chapter pits the Rebels against this poor species of pigs known as the Minox. It's pretty funny how insignificant they were to the Empire Strikes Back, considering just how many levels there are with these freaks. The tail is really what takes it too far. I would kill this thing IRL if I saw one. Again, I like that they're flying enemies here. It's something fairly rare in Angry Birds games. Let's put them in B. You haven't lived until you've seen the Fat Minoc. Just when I thought the Fat Pig couldn't get any better, they combined it with a freaking Minoc. There are few Star Wars characters period that are better than this guy. George Lucas could really learn a thing or two from this game. Obviously S tier. Wow, we're really getting down to it. If you bought the extra Yoda levels, you got to face up against the unique voodoo pigs. Are these things even alive? I'm pretty sure Yoda's just using these for training. Well, I do love their button eyes, so what the heck. Have a generous C tier. And of course, Vader got a voodoo form as well. Uh, maybe it should be Vooder. That really rolls off the tongue. Is it just me, or does Darth Vooder look really freaking awesome? His lame ass sword is really the only thing keeping him an A for me. After defeating the fat Minoc, it's revealed that you were inside the Exogorth pig the whole time. Wait, if we went out his mouth, then we must have entered? Oh man, I got a bad feeling about this. Anyways, the Alaskan bullworm meets a green stinky ugly fat pig, and we're left with the freak of nature, so obviously S tier. And lastly, it felt fitting to end things on the Death Star. I get it, the Death Star isn't alive, but they certainly went out of their way to make this thing look like a pig with a personality. It's the whole dang focus of the second chapter, where we get to blow the whole place up, and then the final chapter has it being rebuilt, only for us to destroy it again. Kick a pig boys down, why don't you? I really hate how they gave him this big smiling mouth in these cutscenes, but otherwise they did an amazing job capturing the look of the Death Star here. It's such an iconic location that makes too much sense to have a pig nose slapped onto it. Let's end our list by giving the Death Star the S it truly deserves. 
I really can't believe I just ranked 66 freaking Star Wars pigs. I basically just executed Order 66 on Angry Birds. I always thought the birds in these games were way cooler, and after ranking both the birds and the pigs, yeah, I was definitely right. A lot of the pigs are really forgettable. They made sure to make each bird feel special, and every other character they slapped a pig nose on and called it a day. I just find the random enemies to be much more bland. And that's sad, considering the awesome playable characters we got to start with. All the main characters on the pork side are genuinely incredible, and they somehow managed to make them all look awesome as freaking Angry Birds pigs. That is seriously impressive. Despite loving the birds more, I would not be surprised to hear that Darth Vader, General Grievous, Darth Maul, or the Fat Minoc was your favorite Angry Birds Star Wars character. They make this massive list all worth it in the end. Let me know your favorite Star Wars pig, and let me know if you prefer the bird side or the pork side. I'm pretty curious. Part 3 of ranking the pigs will probably go back to some more randos like the first video. I know there are some pigs from Epic that deserve a spot, but let me know who else should be there. DUDE! What the H? My members all joined the pork side? Man, this becomes more like a cult every day. If you want to join my cult, I mean join the pork side, then please consider becoming a member of the channel today. Thank you, Groth One Finger, Koba Chrome E, Patrick Byrjan, Hono Maki, Bright Streak, MD Switchy, Dolphin Rider H2O, Dojo Master, Kristoff Creations, Lava Tain, Eduardo Santiago, Jasper TV, Keep, Omegon, Galgai, and Daisy. And it's me, Ali. I know I promised to make the Angry Birds Rio video next, so guess what? Come back next week and learn all about the history of Rio and its final placement on the tier list. I'll see you then. Goodbye. Do you guys believe Han Solo or Greedo? Said Malunky. <laughs> I would have never understood they're pretending to be good without fake bird beaks. Thank you so much. Just kidding. I was wearing a fake bird beak too. Get fake bird beak. Be <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I would have never understood they're pretending to be good without fake bird beaks. Thank you. Ch Sorry, little butler.